You chose the wrong friends. You could warn them. If only you spoke Hovitos. Kana Matuso! Babata! What's up guys and welcome back. So this is part two of my recreating the ocean series involving phytoculture and microfauna. So like many of you, we seek to populate our tanks with as much microfauna as we can. One of the easiest critters are copepods. Over time, through the introduction of frags or other macroalgae, some of these guys come in as hitchhikers. But due to predation by fish and corals, many don't make it too long in the display. A refugium is a great place to raise these guys, but even then, keeping up with supply and demand of the tank is always a challenge. Now that we have mastered raising phytoplankton to feed the corals, it's time to make use of it in other ways. At the creation of this video, I'm producing more phyto than I can effectively use. This has led me to actually toss and replace old cultures, and still, at any given time, I have about five gallons of phyto just laying around. It's time for phase two of my project by introducing the second link in the food chain, which are copepods. And to do this, I decided to use the Poseidon Reef Copepod Culture Kit. Poseidon Reef's approach to copepod raising is very comprehensive. This means that not only do they provide the equipment to raise a successful culture, but they also include cultures to start with. To begin with, you're given a starter copepod culture of Tisby pods already eating Fido. You're also given a container of Fido to start a never-ending culture of your own. And you're given one container of Fido to immediately feed the Tisby pods. If you already have a Fido culture set up, then you can buy the add-on kit to start raising copepods immediately. Basically, everything that you need to get up and going in about 30 minutes is included. Just add water. The kit also includes a few other accessories. First up, you are given two Fido tanks with included lighting. One will be used to raise Fido to feed the pods in a never ending cycle, and the other one will be used to house the pods. Both tanks run off a small air pump and come with all of the necessary attachments. And because pods and Fido have different requirements, an air regulator is also included for convenience. Also, since pods and Fido have different lighting requirements, an inline dimmer is included to prevent blinding your pods. What I found unique about the dimmer feature is that the lighting is there to promote growth and activity to the pods, but also to keep the live phyto you're feeding them alive. If you ever raised pods before, you know that over time, depending on the food you feed the pods, the water will foul as they produce waste. You will need to clean the copepod culture every few harvests, but I found that my water stayed clean much longer feeding phyto versus yeast-based foods. This also means that I can feed the copepods with the phyto water to my, th to my tank because it wouldn't be introducing yeast-based things to my reef. Another cool thing that you get is a copepod house. See, air bubbles can hurt and damage copepods when they're very small, but by using this accessory, they have a safe place to breed, live, and play. The house is washable and should be cleaned out after a few harvests. The purpose of the house is so that they have tiny little areas where these copepods can crawl in, live, play, breed, do whatever they need to do, and it's also a safe place away from all the bubbles that are still necessary to keep the phyto in that tank in suspension. Also with any kit, you're also given the phyto tank fertilizer part A and B, which will last you quite a long time and quite a few different harvests. You're also given a goodie bag of pipettes, tubes, hoses, 
and as well as 10 or so extra bags, which make cleanup very easy. Last but not least, you're given some instructions on how to make this thing work. When you're ready to harvest, they thought of that as well. So they've included a large sieve that you can place over a five gallon bucket in order to extract all of your copepods in order to start a new culture or just to feed your tank. So to date, I have harvested pods once, placing half of the harvest back into the culture for the next go around. So between feeding fodder to the tank and the supplemental pods that I've been raising, I've been able to keep a pair of Bandarin dragonettes and two ruby red dragonettes well fed. So with that, what's next? Well, I have been hard at work assembling everything for the new softy tank. Here's a sneak peek of what to expect. To begin with, the tank has arrived, it's been drilled and the overflow installed. I've also painted the back black. In addition, my custom rockscape is also being created. Now this is a long and arduous process, so I do have a little bit of a wait time to, in order to get this, but I hope you guys will really like what the end result is of this rockscape. So a big shout out to Poseidon Reef Systems for sponsoring today's video. If you guys like today's video and wanna see more like it, please hit that like and subscribe button, comment, and I hope to see you for the next one. As always, I will catch you on the flip side.